Red edition, hey, talk is cheap unless Congress does it. It's cheap, they're just saying. Here's an interesting story. A lady, a very attractive lady, recently walked up to a man. He was in his backyard in Nashville, Tennessee, and said, hey, I see you got a swimming pool, and it's a very hot day. Do you mind if I have a swim in your pool? Which is kind of hard to say no to. She was so pretty, and of course, he said yes. And then she said, by the way, I don't have a swimsuit. Do you mind? Would I offend you if I swim in the nude? Hey, hey not at all, so said he. She took off her clothes, jumped into his pool, and she swam for about 20 minutes and of course he sat watching her swim this is the highlight of his day right in any event she got out of the pool dried herself off with his towel and said thank you very much and left he went into his house and went wow that was kind of a nice experience but not so fast because her accomplice had been inside of his home and he robbed him blind took his cash took his jewelry took his gun a revolver and he phoned the police and said i've kind of been had i think i enjoyed it but i've been had now governments governments are supposed to do their job and they don't very often they need to maybe go home and read their job description. I'm talking now about fish, and this is a fishy story. Tuna, over 40% of all tuna is mislabeled. So says a government study, so you got them studying about themselves, the studies that they don't do or don't do correctly. <laughs> a lot of verbiage there, huh? But in any event, that's what governments do. The mislabeling of food, it's a big deal. And organic, for instance, 92% of all foods that are labeled organic in Canada and in America are not. There, that's a bad stat. That almost deserves a moment of silence, doesn't it? Okay, there's a research company out of Georgia, the Georgia Institute of Technology. Recently, they have done a facilitation for an interaction of a dog or for a dog with its occupation. Oh boy, that's a mouthful. What does that mean? What it means is you finally get to talk to your dog. As bizarre as that sounds, it's actually happening now. A dog, through its noises, will communicate into the software and it'll get mixed up like a dog's breakfast and go back to the dog handler and he'll know what was said. A dog is in the airport, sniffs around, finds some dope <laughs> from the dopes, and, and burr, 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 or bark, 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 I should say, and it goes back to the handler and it says drugs, 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 this kind and that kind. Even. I mean, this is a way out of this is Star Trek on steroids. I mean, I just, wow. But apparently it's true. Just saying with you or sharing with you, that's what I'm doing. Now, in Colorado, the lawmakers there don't get caught like other people get caught with photo radar because when you go down and get a license plate, you register your car. When they go down and register or get a license plate, they register themselves as an individual and they get the plate. So when they go through photo radar and a photo is taken of the license plate, there shows up as being non-existent, right? Because it's registered to them, pardon me, the car is registered to them and the plate really is just there for show. It's kind of an interesting story and the lawmakers are getting a away with zillions and zillions of dollars and zillions that's an exaggeration i know but but they speed they know it they speed all of the time i don't know it's always a kind of a, an insult when a lawmaker is breaking the law because that's kind of their job right okay we have a cash starved city this is in harrisburg pennsylvania you had a democrat mayor there years ago that you know, like all Democrats, you know, you can't go broke spending other people's money, right? He went out and he spent upwards to $10 million buying antiques. He wanted to create a museum and he did it himself. He didn't appoint anybody. They didn't have committees to say, you know, you're hired and you go do this or that. He went to auction sales <laughs> all around the country and spent money. And what's up with that? And now he's no longer the mayor. He got booted and the new mayor says, what is all this stuff? Like we got badges and sheriffs, this and guns and saddles and, you know, grizzly bear mounts mar, mar, and why why and let's sell them now so they're having an auction sale themselves and it's going to last for more than seven days that's kind of a big deal you got a guy that um, well he messed up another guy doing the goofy things missouri you have the governor there who recently has signed a gun safety course for first graders this is a milestone to me at least i guess it isn't there's a couple of other states that have done it also i wasn't aware of it it's pretty unique it's now state law. Missouri is providing one of the stronger state-sanctioned endorsements of the NRA-sponsored firearm safety course. And so far, they've targeted more than one million children annually. The legislation also requires school personnel to participate in an active shooter and intruder drill led by law enforcement agencies. 20 state legislators now have passed measures encouraging the use of the NRA's Eddie Eagle course. Go to their site, nra.org, and, and check out their Eddie Eagles. It's kind of interesting what they do do for school children since the school safety program began in 1988. Missouri is, is uh, 
a big deal, like I pointed out to you, but you know what, North Carolina, Texas, and Virginia endorsed the program also with state laws several years ago. Unknown to me, that's kind of cool. Let me end today with a joke. Uh, this is a, a joke. I've actually told this joke before. It was a long time ago. So if you can remember, well, that means you're young, right? Anyway, but I like it. It's one of my favorite jokes. Here it comes if you're ready. A guy walked into a bar. He was drunk, very drunk. He walked up to the bartender and he says, around for the house is one for you too, my good fella. Bartender thought this is kind of cool. So he passed liquor out to everybody in the bar, took one himself and drank it, and he said to the drunk, that'll be $132. The guy said, I don't have any money. The bartender was mad, threw him outside and kicked him and hit him and came back in and wiped his brow and said, I'm glad to be rid of that bad guy. Ten minutes later, the same guy walked back into the bar and he walked up to the bartenders. My good fella, he says, around for the house, but none for you. You get mean when you drink. <laughs> well, I'm back tomorrow. And we're going to have more for you from the right. See ya.